Cedric, the entertainer. <laughs> Look at that gallery, guys. <laughs> Wanted a round of applause. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Cedric, the entertainer. I'm here at Greenville, South Carolina. My good friend Anthony Anderson invited me here. One of the most, you know, exciting tournaments you can get invited to, man. It's a big deal. Do a lot of great work for a lot of uh, really wonderful charities. So here to show support, show off my amazing golf skills, uh, as you'll see after we edit it. Oh! I'm here, man. That's it. Let's turn up. Let's go. PGA Tour cards up for grabs. These are the PGA Tour's proving grounds. Can you step up and make one of the most important parts of your career? They tour level test. You just gotta really grind. Staying consistent, staying patient. In a grueling season. It is gut-wrenching for those guys out there. Seems to be in shock a little bit, what just happened. Tour hopefuls are sharpened into champions. If we put in a good next four or five months, we've got a great chance to be where we want to be, and that's on the PGA Tour. The singular goal remains the same, to earn a PGA Tour card. On the Corn Ferry Tour, they are all just one shot away. The end of the season is in sight for players on the Corn Ferry Tour. With opportunities dwindling to move into the 25 and take one step closer to a PGA Tour card, everyone is feeling the pressure. Dylan Wu finds himself just outside the 25, while Callum Tarran and Charlie Saxon have significant work to do to climb the list. Mito Pereira and Grayson Sig's futures with the PGA Tour are secured, as other players like Roberto Diaz and Nick Hardy know that a win would cement tour membership. From Northbrook, Illinois, Nick Hardy. Off the back of a top five finish, Illinois native Nick Hardy was looking to make a splash at the Evans Scholars Invitational, presented by First Midwest Bank. Big day for Nick Hardy, an Illinois boy. Doing the folks here proud. Hardy started strong, shooting 64 and then 69 to enter the weekend trailing leader Cameron Young by a shot. I've played a lot of golf here. I grew up five minutes away. There's a lot of people out here that mean a lot to me. Obviously, I want to play well in front of them. I just got to um, enjoy it as much as I can. When people ask me how many hole-in-ones I have, I say, do you count a par three course or do you not? When I was 11 years old, I had my first hole in one on number six here. I have five on regulation size courses. So it's either five or 17, depending on what you count. <laughs> 17, baby. <laughs> this is where I learned the game of golf, playing out here with my dad, starting when I was four or five years old. Be good, baby. When I was 14, 15, 16 years old, he was probably at one handicap. One handicap's really good, but now he's not playing as much. Oh, but that's look, terrible. He's got about 20 feet for par. I think you're still away. Nice right. pot. Mark it. <laughs> I remember when I was like 9, 10, 11 years old, I'd ride over here with my bike and carry my clubs on my back. Usually I'd play in the morning, whether it be alone or my friends, and then in the afternoons, hang out with my friends and go to a baseball game. We have basically had a, a, a 30 degree rule where we would come out and play as long as it was above 30 degrees. And there was winters where there was no snow on the ground. And uh, of course the course was closed, but we would play all the time. He shot 21, it's par 27 obviously. And on the last hole, he had like a 15 footer that he hit dead center, hit the back of the cup and did not go in. And on the way home, after breaking the course record, he wouldn't even speak. He was so mad. Nick's geared his life around getting better at this game, and he's doing everything he can to get better. As parents, that's comforting. And you know, whenever it happens, it happens for him. And you know what? I happen to believe he's on the verge of greatness. Following moving day, Hardy found himself in the final pairing Sunday, trailing Cameron Young by four strokes. 
from Scarborough, New York, Cameron Young. Young, who was the wire-to-wire -wire winner at the Advent Health Championship the week prior, was looking to become just the 10th player in Corn Ferry Tour history to win back-to-back -to -back tournaments. I'm pretty happy out there. I'm very comfortable. Um, I I've made a few little changes with the putter, and it's just bleeding all the way through the bag. Hardy shot a final day 72. I definitely had the crowd, but I wasn't getting the crowd involved at all for the first nine holes and had to settle for a T5 finish as Young played his way into the history books. There was always the thought, once you kind of prove to yourself that you can do it, and you might be able to do it again, so here we are. The Corn Ferry Tour's visit in the Carolinas began with a stop in Raleigh for the Rex Hospital Open, where Mito Pereira came in riding a wave of three top tens in his last four starts. Firing a career low 62 in the opening round. Play from the tee, irons, the same as other weeks, but I made every putt, so felt like easy golf that day. Shot nine under there. It was a great start to get on top of the leaderboard at that moment. If you can go low the first day and the second day, you have done a lot of the work on Thursday and Friday and it's a good push to have a good week. Also looking to have a good week at the country club at Wakefield Plantation was a new face to the Corn Ferry Tour. So I am uh, Moby Dillard, uh, the fourth actually. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and uh, started playing golf when I was about two years old, tournament golf when I was about five or six, and I've been playing ever since. When I was a freshman in college, I started playing on the Advocates Professional Golf Association. Middle of my junior year was when the first rankings came out, and after my junior year, I was in the number one position. And then I ended up playing well again uh, this season, and we made it to regionals, NCAA, and I ended up finishing in the number one position again. As the top-ranked golfer in the APGA Collegiate Ranking, Dillard earned himself a sponsor exemption at the Rex Hospital Open, his first professional start. I'm so excited to be out here. It's an amazing experience. I mean, I don't really have much to lose. This is uh, my first event, and so I'm going to leave it all out there uh, on the course and, and see what I can do. Despite a miscut, Dillard picked up pro experience that will help as he continues his career. Charlie Saxon opened with a 64 to earn a share of fourth before a second round 75 ended his tournament early. A weird week, it was frustrating. I mean, anytime you open with 64, you're gonna be in a good spot going forward and to turn around and shoot 75 uh, was a little bit deflating. I feel like I'm playing some nice golf. I'm trying to chalk it up as just kind of one of those weird days and move forward. Mito Pereira continued his stay atop the leaderboard with a 67 in the second round, followed by a 63 in the third. Pereira entered Sunday tied for the lead with Steven Jaeger and Andrew Novak, looking to secure a PGA Tour card with a victory. Obviously, I was nervous. I mean, everybody gets nervous when you're playing the final pairing and you're close to win a tournament. I think I managed it really well. I played solid golf. I think I missed one fairway, I missed one green. Didn't make every putt, but I think from eight feet in, I made every putt. Didn't make any bogeys either Saturday or Sunday, so my golf was solid, and I think I deserved to win. Pereira and Jaeger each went four under in their final round, with Jaeger sinking a 15-foot putt on 18 to force a playoff. He's a really good player. He has played on the PGA Tours, won six times here. He knows how to win. He knows how to how to play. So I had to make birdie to to beat him. It's no other way. So I really hit three good, really good shots. Hit my driver where I wanted. It was in perfect position. And then hit a really good shot. It was 110, I think. I hit my 60 with a little bit of adrenaline, and I put it to like four feet. It was a great hole. With the victory, Pereira surpassed the 1,700-point threshold, securing his PGA Tour card for next season. 
something he was well on the way to earning last year until the pandemic forced changes to the Corn Ferry Tour season. It's a big relief. Since we had the COVID, after Colombia and Panama and Mexico already had the points to get on the PGA Tour, so I was in the PGA Tour and one week after I was out of the PGA Tour because I had to do it again. So it was, it was a tough, tough moment, but um, I think I worked a lot to get this tour card. I hope I can enjoy it next year. Welcome to South Carolina as the Corn Ferry Tour is in the upstate for the BMW Charity Pro-Am, the 29th edition of this tournament. This week it is a Pro-Am. They gotta love it. You know, the opportunity to, to play along Side some of the best in the future stars of the PGA Tour. While many celebrity VIPs got a chance to tee it up, Callum Tyron got the VIP treatment at the BMW Performance Center earlier in the week. I am a massive car guy. The BMW driving school experience, so excited to do it this year. BMW is an incredible brand. We did some handling in an M4. Body's a little bit sore from hanging on for grim death. Christina Josie, you're good to go, right? I'm going to give you a lean around of this track. Let you see it. They just end up letting you chase me while we're out there, and I'll coach you as we do that. I'm quite a confident driver, but like anything, you can always improve. We had an instructor who was trying to help us navigate the handling track. Race car drivers are looking for ways to create straight line driving areas. That way we can accelerate and break in a straight line. Full throttle straight line, full throttle straight line, brake hard. There you go, look right, swing here, squeeze the power. Then level out, level out, don't look at those cones, just steer quick, steer quick. Don't straight line if you're there, if you straight line, you'll hit the cone. You just hit three cones in a row there, bro. Did I? Wow. Don't look at those. <laughs> This is insane. Tell you what, it's hard work, this. <laughs> my left, my left of lead, you're absolutely ruined. You're doing great, Carl. Keep it up, buddy. This is Are you all right, Derek? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's struggling in the back there, I love it. Carl, you're killing it, buddy. I wish all of our students uh, responded to feedback like that. It's not my first rodeo, boys. This thing is an absolute beast. I follow you, Cal. We're going to do a little off-roading. Our first obstacle is the water crossing. The first rule to the water crossing is no splashing. It's kind of like the kids' school. And then up next is the frame bender. If you stop at just the right point on this, you can actually balance the car on two wheels. But if you just go a half inch too far, it will peter over. We call this the extreme hill for reasons that you cannot see. A break? <gasps> oh, oh. That's what we call the pucker effect, right? If you know what the pucker effect is, I can tell you off camera. Excellent. Maintaining stability going down that very steep incline. It's insane, isn't it? These vehicles are insanely impressive. We'll see a real driver in action. Everybody belts it up and ready? Yep. Sure. The hot lap, I mean, you, you get to ride with a professional driver who's just incredible, and I'd love to be able to drive half the level he can. Um, it was just insane. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. Oh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Absolutely wild. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. Absolutely. That was awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Nick Hardy raced into the top five at the BMW Charity Pro-Am presented by Sinex Corporation with a 63 and 64 on Friday and Saturday. He's got the hot hand right now on the course and really a hot hand overall. Done everything but win. I'd like to build more momentum in my game and continue to give myself opportunities on the weekend to win tournaments. That's the next step for me, and I'm looking forward to do that. With the final round 70, Nick Hardy finished tied fifth for his third top five finish in as many starts. 
One of the hottest players on the Corn Free Tour won last week in a playoff. That's the second victory of the year. Finds himself second on the points list. Mito Pereira entered Saturday in a tie for second. I was just so focused on doing what I know that I didn't even feel if I was playing good or not. I just wanted to go to the next shot and keep the mind in the present. Mito Pereira looking for his third this season in that three-win promotion to head to the PGA Tour. Entering Sunday, Pereira was three strokes behind the leader, Justin Lauer. I just wanted to play well. I mean, I was playing so solid. I had a good start, I made birdie on one and two, so that gave me a little bit of momentum, but then I just knifed one shot over the green on part three, and it was like, whoa. But I played so solid, and my mindset was just the same as every week, try to do the best I can and try to keep my head in the present. Pereira pulled even with Lauer after the front nine and recorded four birdies on the back nine to take a decisive lead. I kept fighting with my mind to just play the best you can and not just think that you already won. You never know what can happen. Pack your bags, Mito Pereira. You're going to the PGA Tour. With the win, Pereira joins an exclusive club, becoming the 12th player in Corn Ferry Tour history to earn automatic promotion to the PGA Tour via his third victory this season. I didn't even think I could win three times in this tour, and right now I just won three times in one year and I'm going to the PGA Tour. This is by far the best thing that I've done in my life. I just can't wait to get there and just to play the best I can. He is just the third Chilean to earn a PGA Tour card and will join fellow countryman Joaquin Neiman on the game's biggest stage. It's a dream and it's going to be good for Chile to have two Chileans there. It's been a long ride, it's been a tough moment, good moments, but it's all worth it. People at home don't need to do this because they all hit slices anyway. You like hitting slices. Yes. There we go. There we go. That's the old feel that I had. I used yep. to feel like I just hit it with my right arm. Yep. When you put the ball between your arms, it slows down your forearm rotation. So he's got to feel like he keeps the ball in there as he goes through and kind of keeps the ball facing up to try to get rid of all the forearm rotation. It's a bit of a never ending progression in terms of, you know, we're just constantly trying to get better each day. And ultimately that turns out into hopefully continuing and playing golf on the highest level week after week. The golf swing has been good. It's been progressing, but we're still trying to kind of take that next step with it. I've been hitting that shot a ton. Yeah. Like it just doesn't feel like I have any chance to cut it. Okay. Just a couple more. Nice. So the right. body's got to clear, then the arms, then the club. Okay. You can't have the arms shooting past the body. Todd and I, you know, just we worked together eight years. So over those eight years, we found different things that we can get back to that make me strike the ball well. It can be repetitive sometimes, but they always work. Dude, that's perfect there. See, that's what you want right there. Wow. That was, yeah. Well, if you look at his physique, you know, he's a big, strong kid. But he's always been able to generate speed. When he's swinging well, he has a lot of body rotation, and he's able to, to release the club in the proper sequence, which is what all good ball strikers and all good long hitters do. There we go. Now we can take some of that out. OK. Did you see how just doing that drill and getting that yeah. sequence better? Because you said you weren't seeing enough curve to the right. <laughs> we got curve now. That's what I love about TA. He knows I'm kind of a field player. He tells me certain things, but I've got to kind of translate them to my own feels. Same thing, get a little steeper going back. Good. Now feel that right arm stay behind the shaft. There you go, perfect. Same feel. There's your cut. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're going for. This is something you can do every day. Okay. You know, when you're warming up. I wasn't swinging it very well going into that day, and I came out, you know, with a clear picture of what I needed to do. Perfect. That was That's the best amazing. One. Perfect shot. Yeah. He came out hitting the ball nicely, so it's always productive to get down the same. He gets me on the right track. See, I think that's perfect right there. That's my shot.
After a pair of weeks on the East Coast, the Corn Ferry Tour returned to the heartland for the Wichita Open, benefiting KU Wichita Pediatrics, where Callum Tarran had found some success in the past with seven of his eight career rounds under par. I like the golf course. It's one of them golf courses where you have to be aggressive and you have to go low. Just keep shooting them under par rounds and hopefully before long, them three, four, five unders turn into the six, seven, eights and that's when you can really start making moves up that leaderboard and obviously in the points. Three more rounds under par had Taron inside the top 10 entering Sunday. A four under final round landed him in a tie for fifth, his first top five finish in nearly a year. I can creep up on that top 25. I need a few good weeks in a row. The goal is obviously to win you know, one of the last events. And I feel as though I can win, but I do understand it's hard to win out on this tour because it's so deep. I'm excited about the rest of the season. The result in Kansas moved Callum Tarran up four spots in the standings to 40th, while Charlie Saxon sits just inside the bubble to reach the finals, and Nick Hardy continues to remain firmly inside the 25. Less than 10 tournaments remain in the quest to claim a card. As the season's end heads into overdrive, the pressure that these players feel only continues to mount every week. Yet Mito Pereira's three victory promotion proved what's possible on the Corn Ferry Tour and serves as added motivation for others seeking to fulfill their own PGA Tour dreams. It's been my goal ever since I was a little kid. I've had my mind, my heart, all set on being a PGA Tour player. One shot at a time, putting one foot forward after the other. Keep trusting it and uh, knowing that's all gonna come together. As long as I keep putting myself in positions, you know, I might just pop through. The pursuit continues next time on One Shot Away.